Finland's pursuit of a domestic armored vehicle capable of protecting its troops while navigating the challenging Nordic terrain reflects a broader ambition shared by many small states, balancing technical innovation with economic and strategic realism. The Protolab MISU, officially designated the PMPV 6X6, is the product of this ambition, a vehicle designed to address vulnerabilities revealed by international operations while promoting the domestic defense industry. Unlike larger countries that can rely on established platforms from global suppliers, Finland sought to develop a system tailored specifically to its needs, combining mine-resistant, ambush-protected design with amphibious capability and cost-efficient components. The story of the MISU is as much about cautious experimentation and limited testing as it is about engineering achievement, offering insights into the complex decision-making processes small nations face in defense procurement. The project began in 2009 when Finnish defense planners recognized that older XA-180 armored personnel carriers could no longer guarantee the safety of troops in a modern threat environment. Experiences in conflict zones such as Afghanistan and Iraq highlighted the deadly risks posed by improvised explosive devices, and even nations far from these theaters realized that mine protection could not be optional. Protolab, a relatively small Finnish company, proposed a solution that would meet these needs while remaining economically viable. By integrating commercially available components, the MISU promised to reduce both maintenance complexity and life cycle costs, making it a practical option for a country with limited defense budgets. This approach reflected an understanding that technical sophistication alone cannot drive adoption, affordability and logistical simplicity are equally critical factors in the success of a military vehicle. By 2015, the first prototype had been unveiled, generating optimism among Finnish defense analysts and industry observers. Two years later, Finland ordered four vehicles for evaluation purposes. These early units were not intended to equip brigades but to test the feasibility of a domestic MRAP under real-world conditions. On paper, the specifications were promising. The MISU accommodates two crew members and ten passengers, featuring armor designed to withstand small arms fire and shrapnel. Its V-shaped hull deflects explosive blasts, a standard in modern mine-resistant vehicle design. Its amphibious capabilities allow it to traverse Finland's abundant lakes and rivers, while a road speed of approximately 110 km per hour and a nearly 900 km operational range suggest a vehicle capable of combining mobility, endurance, and survivability in a way that could serve both national defense and international crisis response missions. Despite these attributes, the MISU has yet to achieve large-scale adoption. The initial testing units provided valuable data but did not result in a full procurement contract. Finland's defense industry landscape is competitive, with platforms like the Patria AMV 8x8 and Sisu GTP occupying overlapping roles. The AMV, a heavier vehicle, has been successfully exported and integrated into European militaries, while the lighter Sisu GTP offers a more affordable, flexible option for reconnaissance and patrol. Against this backdrop, the MISU occupies a middle niche, more protected than lighter vehicles but less costly and complex than heavier ones. While this could theoretically position it as a versatile workhorse, the lack of a decisive domestic commitment has left the program in limbo. In an effort to address this stagnation, Protolab introduced upgraded variants, the PMPV-2 and PMPV-3, featuring more powerful engines, improved internal configurations for command and control, and enhanced blast protection. These upgrades were validated through rigorous mine trials, surpassing established standards for survivability. The vehicle's enhanced protection, combined with its amphibious mobility and reliance on widely available components, positions it as a compelling option for operations where survivability, cost efficiency, and mobility are paramount. Nevertheless, without a significant domestic order, these technical merits remain largely theoretical, and the MISU's export potential faces the same obstacles that confront many small state defense initiatives global markets are dominated by established manufacturers, and foreign buyers are generally reluctant to adopt systems that lack large-scale validation at home. 
While some may interpret the program's slow progress as a failure, such a perspective overlooks the strategic lessons embedded in limited adoption. Testing a small number of vehicles provides Finnish forces with practical experience in maintenance, operation, and doctrinal integration. It generates industrial knowledge in armor design, vehicle integration, and blast testing, which can inform future domestic projects. Even a handful of units allows engineers and military planners to refine systems and procedures, providing insights that would be impossible to obtain solely from theoretical studies. In this sense, the MISU has already delivered value beyond its immediate tactical applications, demonstrating the importance of iterative development and cautious procurement in small states with finite resources. The strategic implications extend further. Finland's approach illustrates a deliberate balance between ambition and risk management. Ordering hundreds of units before the platform was fully tested could have committed substantial resources to a potentially immature design. Instead, the country adopted a gradual approach, limiting exposure while preserving the option to expand production if testing confirmed the vehicle's capabilities. This cautious pragmatism is characteristic of small state defense planning, where financial and operational constraints demand careful evaluation of each acquisition. Yet, prudence can also lead to inertia. Without a clear path forward, promising platforms like the MISA risk fading into obscurity, overshadowed by more established systems that enjoy steady production and deployment. Another consideration is the vehicle's potential role within Finland's broader defense ecosystem. The AMV serves as a heavy mechanized platform for frontline operations, while the Sisu GTP offers light reconnaissance and patrol capabilities. The MISU could fill a specialized niche as a flexible, mid-weight vehicle capable of performing high-risk troop transport, counter-IED operations, or even functioning as a mobile command and control platform. Such specialization could justify procurement and sustainment, highlighting that success for the MISU may not lie in mass production or direct competition with other vehicles but in carving out a unique operational function that complements existing forces. International observers can also draw valuable lessons from the MISU's development. Indigenous defense programs, even when they do not achieve widespread deployment, strengthen national industrial capacity, reduce reliance on foreign suppliers, and signal resilience in the face of regional threats. For Finland, now a NATO member bordering a more assertive Russia, maintaining domestic capability in armored vehicle design carries both symbolic and practical weight. Even a limited fleet of MISU vehicles represents a tangible demonstration of domestic innovation and technical competence, reinforcing the country's autonomy in defense matters. This aspect is particularly important in the context of geopolitical uncertainty, where supply chain vulnerabilities and dependence on foreign military systems can pose strategic risks. The MISU's continued evolution underscores the challenges faced by small defense firms attempting to enter global markets. Exporting armored vehicles is notoriously difficult, with markets dominated by manufacturers from the United States, Turkey, South Africa, and major European countries. Buyers tend to favor platforms with established track records and verified performance in their home militaries. Protolab has positioned the MISU as a cost-effective, amphibious, multi-purpose solution, targeting nations that require protection without paying premium prices. However, the absence of a substantial domestic order makes convincing foreign buyers an uphill battle, highlighting the interdependence between national adoption and export potential. Ultimately, the MISU exemplifies a broader principle in defense acquisition, technical excellence alone is insufficient. Political will, economic considerations, and strategic alignment are equally critical. Success is measured not merely by engineering performance but by the ability to integrate a system into operational doctrine, maintain it efficiently, and justify its procurement amid competing priorities. For small states like Finland, this often means prioritizing flexibility, affordability, and incremental adoption over ambitious mass production schemes. In this light, 
The Misu may not be a centerpiece of Finland's armored forces but can serve as a critical link between heavy mechanized units, lighter patrol formations, and specialized operational roles, functioning as connective tissue in a complex defense architecture. The Misu's journey also emphasizes the value of experimentation in fostering innovation. Even if it never becomes the primary armored vehicle for Finland, the knowledge gained through its development, testing, and limited deployment informs future programs. Domestic engineers gain experience in integrating survivability, mobility, and operational functionality, while the military acquires empirical insights that can shape doctrine and maintenance practices. Such lessons are rarely quantifiable but have long-term benefits that strengthen both industry and defense capabilities. As of now, the PMPV-6X6 MISU sits at a crossroads. It is technically sophisticated, offering a combination of protection, amphibious mobility, and cost-effective maintenance, yet it lacks the decisive commitment needed to transition from promising prototype to operational mainstay. For Protolab, the challenge remains to identify a niche role or secure an export client willing to assume the risks associated with a limited production vehicle. For Finland, the decision revolves around whether supporting a secondary domestic armored vehicle line alongside established platforms is a strategic investment worth making. For defense analysts and international observers, MISU provides a case study in the complexities of indigenous defense development, illustrating the interplay between technical innovation, procurement policy, and strategic foresight. In conclusion, the story of the MISU is a study in ambition tempered by caution. It demonstrates that small states can innovate domestically, producing vehicles that are technically impressive and operationally versatile. Yet it also reflects the challenges inherent in translating prototypes into widespread adoption, especially in a crowded market with competing domestic and international platforms. While its reality remains a work in progress, the MISU has already achieved significance beyond production numbers, showcasing Finland's ability to design, build, and test sophisticated armored vehicles. It may ultimately find a specialized role that complements existing systems or remain a valuable learning platform whose lessons shape the future of Finnish defense industry initiatives. Either way, the MISU stands as a testament to the potential and limitations of small state innovation, where technical promise, strategic planning, and pragmatic decision-making converge to define success.